education and lawyers dominated the Michael Jackson investigation this week. A 13-year-old boy is accusing the singer of sexual molestation. In the mid-1993, the king of pop, Michael Jackson, was accused of child molestation for the first time. While the media took these allegations as facts, in truth, there was many problems with the claims being made. This man is going to be humiliated beyond belief. He will not believe it. He will not believe what's going to happen. Beyond, beyond his worst nightmares, sell one more record. If I go through with this, I win big time. I will get everything I want. They will be destroyed forever. Evan Chandler wanted to use the relationship his family had with Michael to jumpstart a career in Hollywood. Evan also reportedly grew jealous of the positive relationship his son had with Jackson. When asked how the accusations would affect his son, Evan replied, that's irrelevant to me, it will be a massacre if I don't get what I want. Chandler, who was a dentist, later admitted that he had used a sedative when he extracted a tooth from Jordan in early August. The sedative puts people in a hypnotic state when injected intravenously. There was a great article in GQ done by a journalist named Mary Fisher, uh, and she went back and she had proof that Evan Chandler, this man who just committed suicide, and, uh, and the current husband of his wife, then, yeah. the, uh, the stepfather, yeah. uh, had conspired to create this situation and that they actually drugged the kid in the dentist's office and got him to say things that weren't true about oh. him. It was actually Michael who initially wanted criminal proceedings to go first. The attorney for Jordan Chandler, however, wanted the civil suit to go first. The Chandlers never wanted to go to a criminal court, they wanted a money settlement from the very start. So what I did, we got together again with my advisors and they advised me, it was hands down, a unanimous decision, resolve the case. This could be something that could go on for seven years. How much money? So let's get it behind us. New people in the Jackson camp, however, pushed Michael to settle the case. They agreed that he was too sick to endure a lengthy trial and he should settle the case out of court. Michael would later say that this was a big mistake. Now, the one you're talking about never showed up. He's the one who got a settlement in the early 90s. Now, my understanding is the prosecutors tried to get him to show up, and he wouldn't. If he had, I had witnesses who were going to come in and say he told them it never happened, and that he would never talk to his parents again for what they made him say. And it turned out he had gone into court and gotten legal emancipation from his parents. His mother testified that she hadn't talked to him in 11 years. In May 2002, Jackson began filming a documentary, Living with Michael Jackson. The film documented Jackson's life between May 2002 and January 2003. It caused immense controversy for Michael. Bashir was accused by critics of jello journalism, and Michael stated that the film was edited to distort the events and interviews that actually took place. In a rebuttal documentary, Bashir is caught praising Jackson, while in his film he portrays Michael in a largely negative light. Ultimately, an investigation was conducted based on the documentary. The boy seen in the documentary initially insisted that nothing ever happened between him and Michael. But when the relationship between Michael and the family deteriorated, the story changed.
Shortly after he was fingerprinted and photographed, the singer released a statement saying, lies run sprints, but the truth runs marathons. This is nothing but a modern day lynching. This is what they want to see. Him in handcuffs, you got it. But it won't be for long, I promise you. Michael was arrested on November 20th, 2003. While the trial didn't begin until February 2005, the media kept airing specials on Jackson, based on no real evidence. During the trial, it became painfully obvious that there was no physical evidence and that the prosecution witnesses kept contradicting themselves over and over again. However, the media was on the prosecution side. The team of prosecutors behind the Jackson case were engaging in some highly questionable behavior. They illegally raided the office of a PI working for Jackson's defense team and lifted defense documents from the home of the senior's personal assistant. The lead prosecutor, Snedden, was also caught trying to plant fingerprint evidence against Jackson, allowing accuser Gavin Arviso to handle adult magazines during grand jury hearings, then sending them away for fingerprint analysis. So what they said in their opening statement was, we have evidence that five young men were molested. And we're going to present all of that to you. The three people they say they saw molested, they were my first three witnesses. They came in and said they were never touched. So when that happens, I think we were able to effectively take all of us and say, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you can't believe these prosecutors. You can't believe their case. You know, they'll, they'll say anything to try and win. The people of the state of California plaintiff versus Michael Joe Jackson defendant, case number 1133603, count one verdict. We the jury in the above entitled case find the defendant not guilty of conspiracy as charged in count one of the indictment, dated June 13th, 2005, four person number 80. The jury acquitted Jackson on all counts, but this was not the end. One of the defense witnesses would later change his story. Wade Robson testified in defense of Jackson and stated under oath repeatedly that nothing improper ever occurred. He would also go on to defend MJ in numerous interviews before and after Michael died. Are you still friendly with Michael? Yeah, we still talk every couple months, catch up. You do, really? Yeah. Well, what's he like? What's he like? He's a good guy. He's a good guy? He's a good guy. Nothing ever like that? No, no nonsense? No shenanigans? Just had a wonderful relationship. I learned so much from him as an artist and as a kind human being. Um, and it's my goal to try and just continue, uh, as much as I can in my own little world, that legacy. In 2011, Wade approached the Jackson estate to direct the Immortal World Tour, but he was not selected. In 2012, his career began to crumble and he had a breakdown. He failed to find a publisher for a book alleging that Jackson had abused him. In May 2013, he filed a $1.5 billion civil lawsuit against the Jackson estate, claiming Jackson had molested him over seven years when he was a child. You know, he was the first witness I called in the defense case. And if you put on a defense case in a criminal trial, you always want to start with a powerful witness. He was very powerful for us. He said that nothing untoward had ever happened. He said there had been no sexual molestation, no inadvertent touching, nothing improper by Michael Jackson. And then he withstood a very powerful cross-examination by a very seasoned prosecutor, and Wade Robson never changed his position. He was adamant that nothing had happened. In fact, he called the allegations ridiculous. And I'm calling this recent development equally ridiculous. As with the previous cases, there are an immense amount of problems with the accusations. Robson has been caught continuously lying under oath about existence of documents, as well as his search and production of them. Robson also claimed that he and another accuser, Safechuck, only met once or twice in passing as kids. So, um, met once or twice as little kids, but, uh, but, uh, once the court case started, they couldn't really talk to each other. However, they did meet in 2014 after both men had accused Jackson. His story also changed from repressed memory to always having known what happened but not being able to face it.
ultimately Michael was vindicated once again. But now in 2019, Robson and Shafechuck appear in a new documentary. The four-hour documentary has been described as biased since it doesn't include any comments from anyone who supports Michael. Because the truth is, though a few have accused Jackson, most of who spent time with him, defend him to this day. It's, it's almost easy to try to say, oh, it was like weird or whatever, and, but it wasn't because it made sense. Like we were, we were legitimate, like, here's the thing, at the end of the day, we were friends. It's, it's like one of my friendships that people question only because of the fact that he was the most famous person in the world. Yeah, I think the, the bigger the star, the bigger the target. I'm not trying to say I'm the super duper star. The, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, you know, the fact that uh, people come at celebrity, we're targets. And, uh, but uh, truth always prevails. And I believe in that. I believe in God, you know? If I would hurt a child, I would slip my wrist. I would never hurt a child. This is totally false. I was outraged. I could never do something like that. I think Michael's greatest achievement throughout his life was making people happy, helping people. Somebody need an operation or a family starving and need food that he would send over groceries for a year, things like that. I think that's where he really got his enjoyment, seeing somebody sad become happy. Those are the things he really wanted to achieve that was beyond the music. He wanted to make the world a better place. That spirit of his is still around now. God bless Michael Jackson, you know, because he was one of the greatest. Michael Jackson became the biggest pop star of all time. But that's not how I'm going to remember him, because he was just one great human being. Rest well, my friend. I love you, Em.